Planet X Prophecies of 50 Years Ago and More. I found this webpage, Crawford 2000, and it has a lot of information of the Planet X genre. If you don't have a job, you might want to go there and read everything they have so you know the future. I'm reading Dino Craspedon's book for this channel. The title is My Contact with UFOs. Dino Craspedon met the captain of a flying saucer in 1952, published a book about it in 1957, and the captain came to his house. Dino Craspedon is his pen name. His real name is Aladino Felix, born in 1905. He died in 2004. Today is November 25th, 2014, two days before Thanksgiving. So he died 10 years ago at about age 99. In his book, he was told by the captain that the Earth changes in pole shift would take place at the end of the century, around the year 2000. Poor Dino hung around four more years waiting for this to happen, and he died before the pole shift. As I read the predictions of several people, you will see that some say that the date depends upon us. If we lean toward spirituality, then the pole shift doesn't have to happen. But if the war criminals remain in control, then most of the people on the planet will die. That's what the prophets say. I'm reading all I can find to know what they say because I'm not a prophet. Let's get into the write-up on this page and pay attention to the items on the left. If one interests you, the link will be in the video description. The author writes, Here are some of the more remarkable prophecies. In 1919, a German woman medium, known as the Dresden Pythia, predicted a great war between Japan and America, as well as a new European war. Apparently, her patriotism overshadowed her prophetic accuracy, for she predicted that Germany would be the victor over France and England. We may presume that post-war German resentment against the French and English also colored this prophecy. Well, I disagree, and here's why. I have read from multiple sources that Germany did win and that the U.S. obtained the designs for a time machine when Nikola Tesla died. They built it. They did something called the Pegasus Program. Andrew Basiago said he time traveled. Larry Solars said he time traveled. Andy Perro said he time traveled. And one of the things that Andy Perro said he did was he traveled back to World War II and provided the Allies with information so they could win the war. And they did. The South won the Civil War in America, and there are people who went back and helped the North win against the South. The South had a much bigger army, much stronger army. They were much more capable. They were fighting on their own turf, and they were fighting for their lives. And the people who caused the upset did so because they knew the battle plan. And they went back and fed erroneous information to the southern generals so they would lose. Is this all true? I have no idea. But this German woman in 1919 predicts that Adolf Hitler will win, or that Germany will win, and they did. And the CIA went back and changed it. Does that mean that the Nazis are gone? Definitely not. They are all here and their influence is very clear. America has become a Nazi country and we have Gestapo everywhere. It's called the TSA. It's getting worse and worse. And even if you get in a time machine and go back and change the outcome of a war, it doesn't change what happens to the people. They still wind up under a Nazi regime. That's what it seems like to me. Next paragraph. This is a quote. Part of the French, Belgian, and German coasts will be flooded. All of England will sink into the sea during a terrible earthquake. At the same time, there will be a re-emergence of a great continent in the region of the Azores, the old Atlantis. There will be found traces of an ancient culture. They've already found it. Near Cuba, they tried to keep it secret. 
but the military was involved and some people talked, and now it's out. So this prophecy, there will be found traces of an ancient culture, has already borne out true. It says, also at other places will new land emerge from the sea. Many people are predicting that. I don't see any closed quotes there, and I don't know who said it. So you have a quote left open, and now we're entering a new quote, and it starts out, A world destruction as happened to Atlantis 11,000 years ago. Instead of Atlantis, all of England and parts of the northwest European coasts will sink into the sea. And in contrast, the sunken Azores region, the island of Poseidonis, will again be raised from the sea. By comparison, Casey predicted that the island of Posidia, which he located in the Bahamas near Bimini, would rise from the sea in the late 1960s. Boy, is that island late. It's more than 50 years late. Next paragraph. During World War II, an Englishman, Louis Spence, counter-predicted the Dresden Pythia in his book. Will Europe follow Atlantis? Spence predicted that a tilting of the Earth's axis would cause the European continent to sink, a punishment for waging war against the British. In 1921, a German writer, George Lomer, in his book, Coming World Catastrophes, cited a Harvard University study to prove his theory that Atlantis had already started to rise. Two Harvard professors made a study of the sea bottom in the western part of the Atlantic Ocean in 1912 and concluded that the seabed had undergone a significant rise. Either Lomer was taken in by a hoax, or those professors really do bear the singularity unfortunate names of Dr. Liar and Dr. Deluder. In fact, though, the Atlantic seabed has been rising along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. England's most noted prophet in the early part of the century was Count Lewis Hammon, H-A-M-O-N, who wrote under the name of Chiro, C-H-E-I-R-O. In his 1927 book, Chiro's World Predictions, he correctly prophesied that Germany and Italy would go to war against France and England. Here is what he predicted about Earth changes and Atlantis. Quote, During the coming 50 years, an earthquake zone will develop in a northeasterly direction from the Pacific coast of Peru, passing through Panama and Mexico, through northern states and Canada, to the Arctic regions. Wow. I wonder if that is the New Madrid fault line. I have seen animations prepared by someone by the name of Constantine from Moldova. He gets his information from Zeta Talk, and he showed the USA splitting down the middle, an area from Lake Erie to Houston. And on the right side, the east side, that section goes north and east. On the left side, the west side, that portion goes south and west. And as you know, Zeta Talk predicted earthquakes in Japan prior to the New Madrid Fault. Those Japanese earthquakes would be in the vicinity of 9 on the Richter scale. And after Japan has a couple of those, then the New Madrid breaks. And Edgar Cayce said that the Great Lakes would empty into the Gulf of Mexico. And many people have predicted that the Mississippi will be 50 miles wide and that it will be salt water. And that salt water will go all the way to Chicago. Is this true? I have no idea. The next paragraph says, Eastern cities of North America will be seriously affected and a considerable part of New York will be destroyed. Now, the problem here is we don't know if he's talking about New York State or the city of New York. It is New York, New York. There was no closed quote on that last paragraph, and here's a new quote. During the next 50 to 100 years, after a series of devastating earthquakes, the islands of the Azores will rise from the Atlantic and the ruins of the long-lost continent of Atlantis will be discovered and explored." Unquote. Next paragraph. 
Medium Anthony Neat, N-E-A-T-E, channeled an entity named Helio Arcanophus, A-R-C-A-N-O-P-H-U-S, who claimed to be a king of ancient Atlantis. Neat's group, called the Atlanteans, had in 1957 published a prophecy by Helio Arcanophus about earth changes and Atlantis. Now there's a colon and then there's this long quote which says, Events will work up gradually. There will be earthquakes where they are not normally experienced. Volcanoes will become active which have been extinct for centuries. Abnormal weather conditions will prevail, getting worse as time progresses. The seasons will appear to have no more significance, for there will be warm days in winter months and cold days during the normally warm periods of your year. A substance commonly known as black rain will fall from the skies, and there will be considerable chaos. Now, black rain sounds like petroleum products, and Zetatox said that these clouds that surround planet X are methane and petroleum, basically. They're carbon. Carbon is like coal. It's black. I mean real black. Black rain, does that mean black like coal? If so, that is very black. It's probably carbon-based, and carbon is coal, and carbon is also petroleum. So black rain is supposed to fall from the skies, and there will be considerable chaos. When these events have risen to a crescendo, the earth will tilt, which means pole shift. Most of the predictions I have heard were 90 degrees. And that comes from the Zetas. They fly the stars. We are told they have an IQ of 275 on average. That makes Einstein look like a fool. And if they say it's going to be a 90 degree tilt, it's not crazy. We have evidence that there was such a thing in the past. Elephants found in Siberia, where it is very cold, had tropical plants in their stomachs. They were flash frozen about 4,000 years ago. The South Pole has no ice that's older than 4,000 years. There was a pole shift about 4,000 years ago, it seems. Now, if you're reading all the time and you gather up all this information like I do, then there's reason to suspect that pole shifts take place every 4,000 years or so. The Zetas say the average is 3,657 years for the orbit of planet X. They say planet X is real and it's coming. Do I think it's coming? I think there's a lot of evidence that would suggest that they are correct. And I'm just waiting until I see it in the sky before I fully believe because I've been a fool so many times in my life. This time, I want to be more careful. I want to hold off until I see it with my own eyes. People are telling me they see it. They see it in the mornings, they say. I have never seen a photograph of Planet X that I found credible. The Zetas are talking through Nancy Leader, and Nancy Leader has put photos of Planet X. I don't believe any of them are Planet X. When I see pictures of a double sun, I don't believe that either one of those is Planet X. But I'll tell you what I do believe. I believe that Einstein was right when he said that mass can curve light. And then there was an eclipse, and he proved it. The stars seemed to jump. They would be in a certain position for a while, and then suddenly they would just leap over. That's the bending of light. When the light is no longer influenced by the object that's passing, it doesn't bend. And so there was a leap in the position of that star. And I think that's what's happening on the sun. You're seeing the sun twice. It's not two suns. You're seeing the sun twice. And it's because of the bending of the light. Now, what could bend the light? A massive object like a dwarf star. How much mass does that star have? Because we have a lot of planets, and they have mass also, and Jupiter has a whole bunch of mass. You know, in the solar system, 98% of all the mass is in the sun, and about 1.5% is in Jupiter. That leaves all the rest of the planets to divide up what's left. It's about one half of 1%. There isn't much mass other than Jupiter and the sun, and the sun is the 800-pound gorilla. 
So if planet X is real, that would explain why we're seeing a double sun. It's the bending of light. That's my humble opinion. Do your own research to reach your own conclusion. Now, I want to read that again. I have to read two sentences because the second one refers to the first one. A substance known as black rain will fall from the skies and there will be considerable chaos. When these events have risen to a crescendo, the earth will tilt. Many lands will disappear beneath the boiling seas and some will rise from their watery resting places. Among the latter will be the island continent of Atlantis, a land which never completed its evolution and will soon return to do so. End of the quote. Now when he says beneath the boiling seas, we can take that literally and he means the water gets so hot it boils and that would be not the entire oceans. There are seven of them. It would probably be little places here and there like in Hawaii you see the rock coming out of the ground is red hot and it's boiling the water nearby, but it doesn't boil it for miles and miles and miles out. He might also be referring to the seas figuratively saying they're broiling. I think the correct word might be roiling, R-O-I-L-I-N-G. When someone says boiling seas, you can take it literally or you can take it figuratively. I don't know which he means. Many lands will disappear beneath the boiling seas. Does he mean tsunamis that come in and cover land? Does he mean the polar caps melt? The South Pole has two miles of ice, and if that melted, sea level all over the planet would rise 200 feet. And then you add to that what the Zetas have advised, that the water will warm up and that it will expand, and that sea levels will rise 675 feet. And I get so many comments from people who live near the coast and they ridicule me for repeating what I have read. Some of them tell me they want to buy up all of the houses along the coast when there's panic selling because they don't believe this. The people are obviously fools. If they see all of this evidence that we have been seeing and it cannot be faked, it is not a hoax. Earthquakes and volcanoes are not a hoax. End of story. When you see a rapid rise in earthquakes and volcanoes and then sinkholes we've never seen before, we're seeing a double sun, we've got crazy weather, and there are at least 50 other reasons why Planet X can be real. It's not something you just write off and say conspiracy theory or something crazy like that. We all have a duty to collect the facts. We have a duty to hold off our conclusion until we know for sure what it is. And play a very conservative game with your own reputation. Don't commit to anything. Just collect the facts until the facts scream Planet X. When you look up in the sky and you see a planet or a group of planets or a dwarf star in some planets or you see heavy rocks falling to Earth from this tail of this group of planets and dwarf star, it's pretty safe then to say Planet X is real. But what we have to say until we know it's real is, I'm looking into it. I see a lot of strange things that never happened in my lifetime. We didn't have sinkholes and bridges falling. Bridges are just dropping. What causes that? They're built on solid ground. The ground is moving and the bridges are coming down. And we hear a lot of excuses. Oh, that's because the bridge was old. No, we never had this before. You have buildings that are collapsing. Some are just dropping into a hole, a sinkhole. Cars are in sinkholes. Something weird is happening. You can put your head in the sand and deny it, but the rest of us want to continue to collect the facts if you don't mind. If you've already reached your conclusion, then stop watching Planet X videos. Who needs you? What we need are facts, and we want to collect them. Now, what do you have to do with it? Stop writing to me and telling me what your conclusion is. I'm not interested in your conclusion. I'm interested in the facts. I will do the debunking around here on my account. You do the debunking on your account. I want to look into this. I want to know what the truth is. I don't rely on anybody to do my thinking for me or conduct my analysis. I will do that. 
And I hope that you say that you will do that. Each of us must do it because our lives depend on it. And even if you discover that there's a Planet X, it's real, the Van Allen belt is going to drop, we're going to get radiated with microwaves here on the planet, and a lot of people are going to die. If that turns out to be the case, you probably won't survive. If you're chicken to die, what choice do you have? You act like we're killing you because we're observing here what's going on, collecting the data. The government seems to be hiding it all from us. They're afraid that their investments are going to fail. We're not going to buy their products and we're going to buy something else instead, something like canned food or dry goods. If they shut off the water, there's no food. Gasoline pumps and diesel pumps work by electricity. We did not develop a backup system. We don't have auxiliary power in the quantities that we need. And so it's going to come down to who bought the food and stored it away. Now, the government wants to scare us because they want that food for themselves. And so they told us that if we stock up more than seven days of food, we must be a terrorist. No, they are the terrorists. They are the ones who pulled off 9-11 and all the false flags, like the Boston Massacre and this Batman movie theater. They are responsible for all of the major events that we've heard about in our lifetime. And they've gotten away with it because they lied to us. They are behind all of the influenza viruses. I just completed a video about that. It shows that the viruses are man-made. H1N1 is made of human flu, bird flu, and pig flu, and it was a splice job. That's what those who study this say. It was a splice job. They cut and pasted genes in order to make a deadly virus. They're trying to kill us. Can you tell? Look at your food. Look at your water. They're putting chemicals in your food. They're putting fluoride in your water. They're dumbing down your schools. They're spraying the skies with things that attack your immune system, weaken it, barium, nano-sized barium. They're causing Alzheimer's disease with nano-sized aluminum. It's in the form of aluminum oxide. They're spraying us with strontium. What for? There isn't any sane reason why. They tried to kill 2 billion people with H1N1 and H5N1. These are two man-made viruses. H1N1 has three parents from two different continents. More recently, they tried to kill us with Ebola virus. Now, do you think a government like that is going to tell us the truth about Planet X? Don't count on it. Okay, so we just finished the quote, which says that Earth is going to tilt, many lands will disappear beneath the boiling seas, and some will rise from their watery resting places. Among the latter will be the island continent of Atlantis, a land which never completed its evolution and will return to do so. Next paragraph. As to the time of these events, Helio Arcanophus said, Within most of your lifetimes, for your children will rule Atlantis. If Atlantis pops up in the ocean, I don't think anybody should rule it. It should be one nation where the people are free. Free from the controls of the Nazis and the governments. We don't want a central bank there. We don't even want money. We want everyone to live and work and get what they need to work. If they need paintbrushes and pens and computers and farming tools, everybody gets what they need in order to work and nobody has to pay rent which moves up the conveyor belt to the top of the pyramid where those who own everything pile your money, your paltry sum, on top of hundreds of trillions of dollars they already amassed by taking it from us through oil. You've got to pay $20 a week for gasoline. We don't want that kind of society in the future. We don't want a handful of people to live extremely well and be insane while the rest of us are barely making it and some of us don't even have enough food or water, can't get an education. This is nonsense. This is not the way leaders run a planet. These aren't leaders. They're crooks. They're liars. They're thieves. Next paragraph. More about Atlantis comes through British medium Eileen Garrett. Perhaps the greatest medium of the century. He forgot to say which century. I guess it would be the 20th century. 
She became well known in America as the founder of the Parapsychology Foundation and the most tested medium of modern times. An even more illustrious questioner at a seance was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, a writer. He created Sherlock Holmes and in his later years a celebrated proponent of spiritualism. Sitting in at the seance was Dr. Abraham Wallace, an expert on metaphysics. Mrs. Garrett was channeling her 12th century Persian entity, Abdul Latif, who came through primarily to assist in healing. The seance was published in the book Health in 1928 by R. H. Sanders, a physician who consulted with Abdul Latif about his patients. Now that's very interesting. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle asks, quote, Can you give me any approximate date for the sinking of Atlantis? Unquote. Abdul Latif says, quote, It is not really true to say that the Atlantean people could not make records. Many of these records will one day be found by you. And there must have been something like 15,000 or 16,000 years from the time of my own life which was the 12th century, to that of the lost races of the Atlantean civilization. Many people will tell you that Atlantis disappeared so quickly. That's not true. There was a series of three cataclysmic eruptions that caused the gradual disappearance of land, and then in brackets, Casey also said that there were three destructions of Atlantis. Well, you know, when you have a interjection like that, you should give the source the date or the exact quote, and it looks more credible that way. All right, I don't see any closed quote again. Somebody is very careless here with the closed quotes. And the next paragraph is another quote. It says, There are great monuments, tombs to be opened. There will be cataclysms that will bring up to you from the bottom of the sea, that which I swear in the name of Almighty God to be true. Unquote. Dr. Abraham Wallace said, quote, I was told that in the early days they had airships, and they drove their airships by means of etheric energy. Unquote. And Abdul, the Persian, Abdul Latif said, there's no starting quote, I presume it's after the colon. I do not say that they had airships, but they had means of flying. They also had means of producing light from the etheric force, which is equivalent today to the electric energy. Dr. Abraham Wallace then says, quote, I understand that the utilization of that etheric energy for evil purposes was the cause of the first catastrophe in Atlantis, and that today, on the continent, there are some people who have attained to a certain knowledge of that, and if they utilize it as they propose to do, there will be a tremendous catastrophe, end quote. And Abdul Latif says, quote, I assure you of this, that you are quite right in what you hear of the possibility of cataclysmic catastrophe. As soon as a nation, be it great or small, attains a certain degree of knowledge, that knowledge is very often a two-edged sword in the hands of the ignorant." Unquote. Next paragraph. A sobering prophecy, one that reminds us that Germany had initiated work on the atomic bomb, though it was the Americans who first developed the energy capable of world destruction. Casey also said that the destruction of Atlantis was caused by the misuse of powerful energies. Abdul Latif agrees with Casey, the Dresden Pythia, and Chiro in prophesying a rediscovery of Atlantean ruins as well as the familiar catastrophe. Well, not far from Cuba, they already discovered underwater many artifacts, including a machine that's been running for 2,000 years. And I don't know how it runs, but I expect them to reverse engineer it and weaponize it because that's what they do with everything they get their hands on. They shoot down alien ships who come here for scientific study. They're not expecting to be shot down. The Russians also shoot them down. And then they try to back engineer them. 
And sometimes an accident causes an explosion. One happened in Area 51 and it killed about 12 scientists. Next paragraph. In the attic of the Society for Psychical Research in London, back in the days when they were housed at Adam and Eve Mews, old files have been discovered that contain a prophecy by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Conan Doyle had been channeling communication from his guide, Phineas, since 1923, and put together a consensus prophecy of material he had received from other mediums in England and America. Shortly before his death in 1930, he wrote a letter published July 20, 1930, in London Sunday Express, which summarized the channeled prophecies. Ooh, this is good. Quote, if we state the course of events as outlined in these various documents and check them with our information, the result is overwhelming. It would entail a period of terrific natural convulsions during which a large portion of the human race would perish. Earthquakes of great severity, enormous tidal waves would seem to be the agents. There is mention of war, but that would appear to be only in the early stages and to be, in some way, the signal for the crisis. I think there is an end quote that he should have put there, and it's not there. Then he starts a quote, The following details may be gathered. And I don't understand why there's a quote there. Then there's another quote starting the next sentence, and there is no end quote there either. That the crisis will come in an instant a start quote and no end quote, that the general destruction and utter dislocation of civilized life will be beyond belief. And another one, same thing, a quote starting the sentence and none to close it out. That there will be a short period of utter chaos followed by some reconstruction. And the same pattern here, no end quote. Quote, that the total period of the upheavals will be roughly three years. Quote, that the chief centers of disturbance will be the eastern Mediterranean basin, where not less than five countries will entirely disappear. Eastern Mediterranean basin. Now, would that be Tunisia, Morocco, Egypt, Libya? Eastern Mediterranean basin. I think you would have to go south because north, it's all mountains. Italy is mountainous, southern France is mountainous, southern Spain is mountainous. Then there's another quote, and this one has an end quote. It says, also the Atlantic, where there will be a rise of land, which will be a cause of those waves, which will bring about great disasters upon the Americas, the Irish, and the Western European shore, involving all the low-lying British coasts. There are indicated further great upheavals in the southern Pacific and in the Japanese region. Well, people from England are often asking me, am I safe? And from what I understand, the highlands are safer than the lowlands, but that does not account for sinking. These prophets are saying that England will sink and much of northern Europe will be underwater. It's a pity because there are a lot of great people, very nice people in those areas. I'm very sad about that. But I'll be stuck here in the desert with no water, no food. There's water in the spa, but I think someone will kill me for it so they can flush their toilet. One of the neighbors here. Next paragraph. As for the time of these events, Conan Doyle felt that they were very close, but also said that mankind could be saved by returning to spiritual values, a sentiment also expressed by Casey. Well, the aliens embrace this idea also that if we straighten up and fly right, that the pole shift doesn't have to take place, and I don't understand how astronomy could have anything to do with spirituality. That if the pole shift and the tsunamis are caused by a large, massive object passing nearby, that no matter how spiritual you are, you're going to die. We are seeing unprecedented numbers of earthquakes and volcanoes. And that is not a hoax, folks. It doesn't pay to make jokes about who is toast. I don't think there is a safe place on the planet. This catastrophe is planet-wide. There are some places that are absolute suicide, and I think coastal regions are those. 
But I've been ridiculed so much by people who live near the coast or on the coast, and it reminds me of Atlantis. So many people died, I understand, and they just wouldn't listen to reason. It seems like that's what we have today. Next paragraph. From South America came similar prophecies of earth changes. A Brazilian living in Sao Paulo and writing under the pseudonym of Dino Craspedon claimed that the following prophecy published in England in 1958 in My Contact with Flying Saucers was given him by a captain of a flying saucer. Like Casey, he predicted the tilting of the Earth's axis, but gave us as a cause a warming of the North Polar ice cap that would redistribute the Earth's waters. Well, the northern polar ice cap has already melted. They're even using it now as a sea lane. And the Russians and everybody in that region of the world are fighting over who owns the, uh, the, uh, Atl- the, uh, who owns the Arctic Ocean. I think all parts of the earth belong to all of the people. And I don't like this idea of kings grabbing up all the land they can and causing wars in which we the people die so that those kings can have more money and more land, more real estate. I don't like kings and royalty. I don't like presidents and puppets. And if you got rid of all the presidents and the puppets, all the fake representatives, all the royalty, the earth would be in much, much better shape because these people are like a cancer to the planet. When they die, I promise to cry a lot. Next paragraph, quote, It will be brought home to you by a tremendous earthquake that will shake the earth to its foundations. Cities will fall in ruins and great cracks will appear in the surface of the earth. When this happens, land will emerge from the Pacific and from the North and South Atlantic. The emergence of these new land masses will change the level of the oceans, causing flooding in low-lying countries. In 1950, a celebrated Brazilian medium named Hercilio Maes Maes, channeled a similar prophecy from his guide, Ramatus, Ramatus, as quoted by Pedro McGregor in Jesus of the Spirits, 1967, Maes predicts that the Earth's axis will change through 90 degrees due to the gravitational pull of an enormous new planet which will enter our solar system soon. Quote, entire continents such as Europe will be completely destroyed and vanish forever beneath the new oceans which will form. North and South Poles will be totally de-iced, and man will find unimaginable riches to help him form the new humanity of the third millennium, Unquote. Next paragraph. Axis tilting appears in an earlier prophecy from 1922 quoted by Harriet and Homer Curtis in their Coming World Changes, 1926. They claim the prophecy was given to them by a mysterious personage who immodestly titled himself King of the World. Quote, owing to volcanic activity and a tilting of the axis of the earth, vast and cataclysmic changes were to take place in the comparatively near future, which would entirely remodel and rearrange the land surface of the globe, unquote. We have two paragraphs left. The most famous of the early prophets of earth changes and Atlantis was Madame Helena Blavatsky, B-L-A-V-A-T-S-K-Y. She lived from 1831 to 1891, a medium, mystic, and founder of the Theosophical Society. In her channeled work, The Secret Doctrine, 1887 to 1897, she prophesied. Before I read her prophecy, I have to tell you that I read about her, and most of what she supposedly said is not attributable to her. But let's read it anyway, and you can do your own research to find out if she's your favorite guru. See if she's your favorite prophet. She prophesied, quote, that the periodical sinking and reappearance of mighty continents, now called Atlantean and Lemurian by modern writers, is no fiction and will be demonstrated. It is only in the 20th century that portions, if not the whole, of the present work will be vindicated, end quote. 
Well, it's a vague prediction at the end, but she mentioned Atlantis and Lemuria and says they periodically sink and reappear. Now, how could that happen? I'll tell you how it could happen. Planet X has an attraction because it has mass, but Planet X is also magnetic. And the Earth has a portion, the Atlantic Rift, which is dense iron. And Zeta Talk says that Planet X will lock on to the Atlantic Rift and the Earth will stop rotating. I presume this happens when Planet X passes through the ecliptic plane and is closest to the Earth. We have three days where the Earth stops rotation and the ancients have said that the Sun rose in the West for four or five days, something like that. So in addition to this magnetic attraction, we have a change in rotation. Maybe the Earth rotates because of the mass of the Sun and there's some reason that causes rotation. I don't know. But when Planet X gets close, the Earth changes its rotation and rotates in the opposite direction. And we have the Sun rising in the West for a while, a few days. If Planet X has the magnetic attraction to pull the Atlantic Rift, you could see Atlantis popping out of the ocean and rising up. Now these are plates that float, and when one is pulled up, it might stay there for 4,000 years until the next pole shift, or however often they happen. I'm not talking about pole reversal, where the North Pole becomes the South Pole. I'm talking about a pull shift where you see 90 degrees turn. And I understand now how that can happen. Planet X comes in and does a reversal when it crosses the ecliptic plane because it obeys the big bully, the sun. The sun is much larger than planet X. And so there's a reversal of the polarity once it passes through the ecliptic plane. When it does that reversal, what was repelling the Earth is now pulling the Earth in. And so the Earth starts moving toward planet X and the Sun. And as planet X exits the ecliptic plane and moves up above it, it lets go of the Earth. But the Earth has already moved 90 degrees because one of the poles was pulled toward planet X and the South Pole is now pointed toward the Sun. I think that's when all the melting is going to take place. We're 30 million miles closer to the Sun. The South Pole is aimed right at the Sun and that heat is going to melt the polar caps. Now, when Planet X releases the Earth, it doesn't reach back and turn the 90 degree turn back the way it was, leaving Earth undisturbed. Earth permanently, uh, permanently, 4,000 years, changes its polarity. It begins to spin differently now, and what was the Antarctic and the Arctic are now tropical climates. We know this happens because elephants were found with tropical plants in their stomach and they were found in Siberia. Siberia has a lot of oil probably because it was tropical. I think oil comes from algae, not dead dinosaurs. We know that algae grows all petroleum products you want. And some are right-handed and some are left-handed and their chiralty, that's what it's called, right-handedness and left-handedness is called chiralty, their chiralty determines if plants and animals can eat it and use the energy. We can only use dextrose or right-handed. We can't use the left-handed. They had a product years ago called Illustro or something like that, and they were putting it in food. We couldn't digest it, and so it gave people diarrhea. It was oil, but we couldn't digest it. So if you want to make French fries and you don't want to gain weight, you use Illustra. You eat the French fries, the oil doesn't digest because it's the wrong chiralty, and it passes right through. Well, if your body's not absorbing those oils, when they get to the lower intestines, look out. <laughs> so people had diarrhea, and I think they took it off the market. I'm not sure. So Planet X pulls on the magnetic parts. Now there's a big part of Mars where a chunk of Earth is gone. I think that land had a high iron content and Planet X came whizzing by and pulled it out. Scientists don't have an explanation for the big Grand Canyon that's 4,000 miles long. Mars is smaller than the Earth and that Grand Canyon is 4,000 miles long. It could stretch from Los Angeles to New York and it's much, much bigger than our Grand Canyon here in Arizona. 
So everybody forms their own opinions about what happened to cause things. And I say that big chunk of Mars that's missing was pulled out by Planet X not too long ago. Could be millions of years ago. That's not very much time. And the atmosphere was also sucked away. The aliens have told us that. The water is gone, but there's evidence that there was water. If Planet X passed close enough to Mars, did it suck away all the water along with the atmosphere? I think that's very possible. Only recently did scientists admit that the asteroid belt appears to have been a planet that got all busted up. When Planet X comes through, it's got a lot of debris. Some of that debris are mountains, and some could even be bigger, like planets or moons. And if one of them smashed into that planet that used to be between Mars and Jupiter, it could have shattered it, and we have the asteroid belt. Don't believe anything I say. If you want to consider it, that's okay. But I don't think we're going to get any science out of government. If they discover anything, they're going to keep it to themselves. They're not sharing anything. They want us to pay all the bills, but they're not going to give us any of the knowledge. And that's why I don't think we need a government. If Planet X comes whizzing past the Earth, and we have a North Pole and a South Pole, and what determines the North Pole and the South Pole? It's the orbit. If the, if the Earth is spinning, not the orbit, revolution on its axis. The rotation of the Earth causes the molten magma inside to move, and that creates a magnetic field. You have a North Pole and a South Pole. And when Planet X comes by, its North Pole repels our North Pole and as long as it's far away, we just have a wobbling. But when it gets closer and it passes through the plane of our solar system, all of our planets are located in a ring, like Saturn's rings, Neptune's rings, galaxy rings. The Milky Way galaxy is organized the same way. It's the same physics. They organize in rings, and everything rotates around the large mass. In galaxies, that large mass might be a black hole. We don't know because no light comes out to tell us anything. And so all of our planets go around the sun in a disk, except Pluto, and it's not a planet anymore, so it doesn't matter. It's just a rock out there. It's a planetoid. And Planet X comes in on a weird orbit, too. It is not in the plane of the rest of the planets. And so it comes in under the disk. We say under. Uh, there is no up and down in space. The Australians do not live on the bottom half of the world. It's just as correct to say they live on the top of the world instead of the bottom. But the Europeans decided that they were on top a long time ago, and that put Australia on the bottom. But when you have gravity, Europe has gravity, and Australia has gravity, so which one is up? Neither. It's another distortion of reality. But let's assume for a minute that the northern hemisphere is up and the southern hemisphere is down. Planet X comes in under the disk. It's called the ecliptic plane. And it passes through the ecliptic plane, and that's when the pole shift takes place. Because when it passes through the plane, its own polarity reverses. And instead of repelling the Earth, it now draws the Earth in. The animation I saw, it repelled Venus, and Venus went flying in a new orbit. And it pulled in the Earth, and then Planet X continued up, and the Earth then was hurled out into space with a new orbit also. But it pulled the Earth in as far as Venus's orbit. And that's 30 million miles closer to the Sun. The normal Earth orbit is 93 million miles from the Sun. And when it gets pulled in one-third closer, do you think that's going to cause a warming of the Earth? Of course. It, we should be a lot warmer all over the planet. We are going to get a new orbit. We might be closer to the sun. I don't know. Those who do know are using math that we cannot do on this planet, we humans. And our average person is not walking around with an IQ over 200. The Zetas have an IQ of 275. Average. And Einstein was about 180. He looks like a fool. Their average person is almost twice as smart as he is. So they can figure out things that we can't figure out. And we are humans and mammals, and they are not reptilians, but reptilians became very intelligent and fly the galaxies. 80% of all life, according to the Zetas, is reptilian, not mammalian. Only 10% is mammalian because most planets are warmer. So the reptiles had the advantage. 
But warm-blooded mammals occasionally on a cooler planet will emerge on top. And the Zetas, I understand, are derived from insects. And it's very possible that insects are highly intelligent. And I don't know how many species there are in the galaxies that are insectoid. But I'm pretty sure that there's more than just mammals, reptiles, and insects. I'm sure there are sea creatures that have spaceships full of water. And they have learned how to operate machines and defy gravity and fly the stars. I would like to meet the reptiles and the insects. I'm not sure how we would communicate with those that travel in spaceships filled with water. If it's telepathic, that's cool. How close to us are they? I mean, do they think like we do? Or do they see the world entirely differently than we do? It's a surprise that insects would see the world the same way we do. It's surprising to me that they would come upon mathematics and, and physics. But we have a lot to learn, and the last thing we should do is shoot down spacecraft because if we meet these people, it's a chance to learn. We need to be very peaceful people so that they want to live next door to us or meet us. They don't want to send in their best scientists and have us kill them. We have a barbaric leadership. They shoot down alien craft because they want to reverse engineer it. Maybe there's a pole shift every... 3,600 years for a reason. Maybe that reason is to drown all the bad leaders. This group thinks they're going to beat the pole shift by going underground. And if radon gas poisons them all, or if they find that they just cannot recirculate their own sewage, or that the medications that they're taking are winding up in their water supply, and they all die, I promise to cry. That's all for this one. I'll be back with more on Planet X because I'm finding stuff again, and it's interesting. See you next time. Planet X Prophecies of 50 Years Ago and More I found this webpage, Crawford 2000, and it has a lot of information of the Planet X genre. If you don't have a job, you might want to go there and read everything they have so you know the future. I'm reading Dino Craspedon's book for this channel. The title is My Contact with UFOs. Dino Craspedon met the captain of a flying saucer in 1952, published a book about it in 1957, and the captain came to his house. Dino Craspedon is his pen name. His real name is Aladino Felix, born in 1905. He died in 2004. Today is November 25th, 2014, two days before Thanksgiving. So he died 10 years ago at about age 99. In his book, he was told by the captain that the Earth changes in pole shift would take place at the end of the century, around the year 2000. Poor Dino hung around four more years waiting for this to happen, and he died before the pole. I disagree, and here's why. I have read from multiple sources that Germany did win and that the U.S. obtained the designs for a time machine when Nikola Tesla died. They built it. They did something called the Pegasus Program. Andrew Basiago said he time traveled. Larry Solars said he time traveled. Andy Perro said he time traveled. And one of the things that Andy Perro said he did was he traveled back to World War II and provided the Allies with information so they could win the war. And they did. The South won the Civil War in America. And there are people who went back and helped the North win against the South. The South had a much bigger army, much stronger army. They were much more capable. They were fighting on their own turf and they were fighting for their lives. And the people who caused the upset did so because they knew the battle plan. And they went back and fed erroneous information to the southern generals so they would lose. Is this all true? I have no idea. But this German pole shift, as I read the predictions of several people, you will see that some say that the date depends upon us. If we lean towards spirituality, then the pole shift doesn't have to happen. But if the war criminals remain in control, 
then most of the people on the planet will die. That's what the prophets say. I'm reading all I can find to know what they say because I'm not a prophet. Let's get into the write-up on this page and pay attention to the items on the left. If one interests you, the link will be in the video description. The author writes, Here are some of the more remarkable prophecies. In 1919, a German woman medium, known as the Dresden Pythia, predicted a great war between Japan and America, as well as a new European war. Apparently, her patriotism overshadowed her prophetic accuracy, for she predicted that Germany would be the victor over France and England. We may presume that post-war German resentment against the French and English also colored this prophecy. Well, a woman in 1919 predicts that Adolf Hitler will win, or that Germany will win, and they did. And the CIA went back and changed it. Does that mean that the Nazis are gone? Definitely not. They are all here, and their influence is very clear. America has become a Nazi country, and we have Gestapo everywhere. It's called the TSA. It's getting worse and worse. And even if you get in a time machine and go back and change the outcome of a war, it doesn't change what happens to the people. They still wind up under a Nazi regime. That's what it seems like to me. Next paragraph. This is a quote. Part of the French, Belgian, and German coasts will be flooded. All of England will sink into the sea during a terrible earthquake. At the same time, there will be a re-emergence of a great continent in the region of the Azores, the old Atlantis. There will be found traces of an ancient culture. They've already found it. Near Cuba, they tried to keep it secret, but the military was involved and some people talked, and now it's out. So this prophecy, there will be found traces of an ancient culture, has already borne out true. It says, also at other places will new land emerge from the sea. Many people are predicting that. I don't see any closed quotes there, and I don't know who said it. So you have a quote left open, and now we're entering a new quote, and it starts out, a world destruction as happened to Atlantis 11,000 years ago, Instead of Atlantis, all of England and parts of the northwest European coasts will sink into the sea. And in contrast, the sunken Azores region, the island of Poseidonis, will again be raised from the sea. By comparison, Casey predicted that the island of Posidia, which he located in the Bahamas near Bimini, would rise from the sea in the late 1960s. Boy, is that island late. It's more than 50 years late. Next paragraph. During World War II, an Englishman, Louis Spence, 